Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ask Coffee Online. My name is Chef Caesar, and today we're going to talk about peppers. Well, peppers, no, chilies. Well, which one is it? Okay, well, the proper name is chilies, but, you know, the pepper name came about when uh, Christopher Columbus came to the New World, and he was commissioned to find pepper because it was so valuable to them. When he goes back to the queen, he brings, you know, these peppers, and he's like, well, I found pepper. Well, no, you found chilies, and that's how the name pepper came to be, you know, and now everybody calls them peppers except, you know, Mexico, South America, Central America, they call them, you know, chilies. And even nowadays, we go to the Mexican supermarket, you see in the labels, chili, you don't see peppers, because that's why we call them down there, and they're always going to be called peppers, you know. And uh, like I said, th these peppers are native to Mexico, South America, and Central America. And then uh, Europeans came over, and they, you know, brought them back to Spain, and it's how they uh, kind of spread throughout the world. Now they've been used in uh, different uh, cuisines in different ways. And um, what makes peppers hot? Okay, well, you know, not all the peppers are hot like some people think. Like, for example, we have this green pepper, the bell pepper. They're not hot at all. And then we have this habanero pepper, which is really, really extremely hot. But what makes them hot is the chemical they contain. It's called capsaicin. Capsis and they, they contain this chemical inside the membrane. Some people think that they're in the skin. No, you cut them open. And there's not even the seeds are really hot. This membrane that you see inside is what contains the most uh, amount of chemicals for uh, the heat. And uh, why does it make it hot? Well, this chemical, uh, when you eat it, attaches to the sensory neurons in your skin, your tongue, and it kind of sends signals to your brain saying, whoa, something's going on down here, when in reality there's, like, nothing happening. There's no damage being done to the tissue, but so what? Okay, you still feel the heat. How do you get the heat to go away? Well... There's a few things you can do. If you get like a lot of heat, for example, in your hands, you can uh, you know mix water and bleach. You do like five parts water to one part bleach, and kind of dunk your hand in there. Don't leave it too long, because you might get irritated. And this causes this chemical to you know turn into salt and kind of just fade away. But you don't want to arrange your mouth with bleach water, definitely not. So what can you do then when you have your you know mouth on fire? Well, there's a few things you can do. One, this since it's an oil-based compound. It blends really good with the fat and uh, dairy products. For example, milk, you can try sour cream or yogurt. This uh, is going to help ease the pain. Also, you can drink an uh, acid drink, for example, orange juice, tomato juice, lemonade. It's going to help you know, also ease the pain. Or you can eat some carbohydrates, like a piece of bread, rice, or tortillas. That's why a lot of you know, Mexican dishes or you know, like cuisines, they, they use like yogurt and uh, Indian cuisine to like, tone down the you know, amount of heat. Or they kind of put rice in your plate to like ease out the heat and the uh, and the dish itself. And uh, the way that this uh, heat measure it was uh, it's a scale called Escobil, and it was developed by a pharmacist in back in 1912. The name of Wilbur Escobil, and it measures the heat content and the level of uh, chemical on each pepper, and it goes from zero to like you know millions, depending on which pepper that they're they doing. And uh, and sometimes you know you think that. All peppers are hot, and how do you find out which peppers are hotter? For example, we have here like you know jalapeno peppers. This you, the way you can find out which one's hotter by the the way they're looking at in the skin. You have two like pretty much identical peppers. One is like darker and has this little like cracks which look like they're white, which means that it was left in the plant longer, and the uh, content of the chemical is much higher than the one I got in my right hand. It's like light green and it's not as hot. And also when they become you know ripe. They turn like red, and they even those little cracks. Even they have more cracks because it's, they're more ripe and it's been ripe in the plant. And also, you know, like for example, you find you know the same pepper being processed in three different ways. Like a jalapeno, you find them fresh, you find them canned in the brine, and also you find them you know smoked. They're dry, they smoke, and they put them in this adobo sauce, which is a tomato sauce with onions, gar garlic, and vinegar. And every time if you cook you know the same dish with the same pepper. It's going to give you a different flavor profile because, you know, just by the way it was processed. Also, you find like a bunch of, a lot of dry chilies, you know, in Mexico. For example, we have a poblano pepper. This is what we use, you know, for like make chilies, rellenos when they're fresh. And also, there's a way to find which are the better ones. You know, sometimes they're like real light green. They're like kind of shiny like this one. You want to find the darker ones, you know, with like the skin that's not wrinkly yet because, you know, when they dry, they become, you know, an ancho chili. And also, again, the flavor is uh, so different from fresh to dried pepper. And then the reason sometimes why they seem like they're darker 
no, not like red like this, uh, wajillo pepper, because the way they dry them, and sometimes when they dry them in the sun, they, they stay bright red, like this one here, and it, well, sometimes you find this wajillo pepper is like darker. The reason why is because they dry them in ovens, and that's how they become darker, you know. But if, also the flavors, it's really different. You can find these peppers like, like dry like this. You can find them in a powder form or in a paste. And sometimes, you know, if you want, you, you wonder sometimes why, like, and, uh, people from different regions, they're like warmer, they're hotter, they have like different, you know, like hotter dishes. You don't see people living up north, Eskimos haven't coming up with a really hot sauce. Well, they don't need to. There's two main reasons. One, because they lack refrigeration you know, around the, you know, like the equator. They don't have, you know, remote areas. They don't have refrigeration. As we know, when uh, the food is left out, it starts to go sour. And the heat on the peppers kind of disguises the, the taste, and they're still able to eat it. The second one is really important. You know, when you uh, eat peppers, the chemical of the peppers, you know. What is the best way to skin a pepperamo pepper? Okay, the best way when you roast a pepper, you can do it. And uh, the question was, what's the best way to skin a poblano pepper? Well, it's really uh, easy. If you can, if you got a blowtorch at home, maybe you don't, but you can just put on the flame on the stove. You know, kind of turn it over. Once it's nice and and, and uh, burn the skin, put it inside a Ziploc bag. Seal the bag, leave it there for a few minutes, and the skin is gonna come up really easy. Once you take it out, it's gonna like steam. So the skin is gonna just peel off when you take it out of the, out of the bag, and it's gonna be really easy to to skin. So that's the best way to do it, you know. It's, I found a nice way. Also, if you have like a, you know, in the restaurants we have like a, this big bowl. So we make a big batch of peppers, throw them in the bowl, you cover with plastic wrap, and let them steam for about five, ten minutes. Then you go back, they're kind of wrinkly, and then the skin just falls right out. The same way you can do for that roasted red pepper. If you want to make a, a roasted red pepper soup, which is a wonderful uh, soup, you can uh, do it the same way. And also, you find these roasted red peppers in, in the cans. You know, they're already done, but honestly, I like them much better when they're fresh. The flavor profile is so much better than, you know, like, you know, I'm sure you know this, than the ones that come canned already in the brine, and they peel with chemicals, and, I mean, it's just a different uh, uh, flavor. Also, from a red pepper, you know, they make paprika. That's uh, the dry form. They dry it, and they get ground as paprika. We, you know, we use it to, make, to put on top of fish for color, a little taste. And also sometimes they, a lot of places they use it on top of the baked French onion soup for color. And uh, like I was saying, when people in the hotter parts of the world eat you know, hotter foods, the second part is because I was saying that you know, this chemical makes your, your blood uh, circulation increases and in turn you, your body begins to sweat. And uh, you know when you sweat, you, it's the way uh, for your body to cool off. So this uh, helps them to keep the body temperature down and not overheating. And, uh, also, like I, I was saying, you know, the, the way you process peppers it has a different uh, impact in the flavor. For example, if you do like a roasted poblano pepper, and uh, then you're going to do like you know, one of the dried chilies, it's the same pepper, but the flavor is going to be so different from a fresh pepper to a dry. You know, and it, it's, uh, sometimes, you, I mean, you can use peppers without you know, killing yourself and, like, and uh, overheating, you know, burning your mouth, because you, know, you can just are able to kind of boil the seeds and. And like I say, you can make, you know, get the flavor from the pepper, but not have the over, you know, heat in your mouth that you don't be able to taste the flavor. So there's ways you can do that. Here we have, you know, banana pepper. These are wonderful, you know, we grow on steaks outside, throw them in the grill, you know, you skin them and eat, you see them with like a spider, you're like, you know, with a steak. And they're not that hot. If you try to avoid the membranes, the seeds, this is, you know, how, you know the best way to, to eat them. And uh, like I say, you find them also in the cans. And here we have uh, another uh, chili. It's a pasilla chili. And you know, in Mexico, when they make the mole sauce, they use a different, uh, like a blend of, uh, of peppers. They use pasilla, they use anchos, and they use mojillos. The reason why, because each one has a different flavor profile. This is like a little bitter taste. And when you, in this is uh, sweeter. So you kind of blend it, the flavors come together. And the mojillo peppers have a little more heat. And now uh, when you open these peppers, you're also going to see little membranes inside with seeds. And, you know, you have to, like, peel them, and then you have to smoke them or, like, throw them in and toast them. And also when you do that, you're going to be, like, sneezing because the chemical in the peppers are going to go up in the air with, with, with the smoke, and you're going to, you know, breathe it. It's going to start to, like, you know, you got, that's why you, you start sneezing when you see that people toasting uh, dry chilies. Any more questions out there, Seth? 
and like I say, I mean, there's so many different types of peppers out there, you know. And uh, like I said, the best way to to tell like the peppers which ones are hottest, like you know, like I say, you know, the color, you know, it's like bright green or like you know, for example, this uh, red pepper, the bell pepper, the mantle pepper, you know, sometimes they have a little lighter color, and then then the ones that have like dark color have like more flavor because they've been in the, in the plant for a longer time and they they ripe longer, so they uh they flavor is more intense and that's uh, that's the reason why you know the peppers have more flavor and also over here we have more dried chilies because I mean there's uh, tons of different varieties of chili. This is uh, arbor chili which translates to a uh, pepper from a tree. The reason why is because the plant it doesn't die every year like you know you can you know grow this it grows like a little tree and every year you can you know peppers come back out the flowers and it doesn't die like a, a pepper from a, a plant from a bell pepper they only, you know, produce once and then you have to, you know, plant it over again the following year. That's the reason why they're called arbol, you know, chili arbol, because it it's, uh, comes from, like, a tree, you know, a plant. And also here we have a uh, habanero peppers. And these peppers are really hotter than the jalapeno, which, uh, again, you can uh, try to avoid these seeds. And if you can, definitely wear gloves if you're going to handle peppers. Because that way you don't have this burning sensation in your hands and also in your mouth. You can still get a, and every pepper, you know, it smells different. You cut a habanero pepper, and then if you do a jalapeno pepper, it's going to, you know, smell different and taste different. This smells like more like fresh green. And then also we have a, a other pepper, serrano peppers. This is a little hotter than a jalapenos, but it tastes a, little, a lot greener than the jalapenos, like a greener, grassy taste. But the heat content is a little, it's a little higher. So... You have to be you know, careful which pepper you want to choose. Sometimes recipes call for a, a you know, uh, I'm sorry, a jalapeno pepper or a poblano pepper or, a, or a, let's see, habanero pepper, and everyone has. How do you know when a pepper is the ripest to use? Well, with, like I said, with and the color, and also in these little lines. What was? How do you know when the pepper is the ripest to use? Well, like for example, this jalapeno pepper when it's really ripe, it turns like red, and also even before it turns red. It starts to form this little like little cracks in the skin, and this is one you know which means it's riper and it's been on the plant the longest. And like I said, the longer you keep it, it's gonna turn red. The same thing with like a, for example, a, a bell pepper, red pepper. The darker the color it gets, the more ripe it is, the more flavor you're gonna get out of the pepper. That's how you you can tell which peppers are you know better to use or you know to pick the best peppers when you go to the supermarket. So that's that's how you do it, uh, pick the best peppers. And also they come in different cans, different forms, like this uh, serrano peppers. They also come in the rind in the can, and you can find them fresh. I mean, there's a tons of ways that peppers come. And like I said, every uh, time you, you cook peppers, if you change the, the way the peppers you know, are cooked, you change the flavor profile of the dish. And now uh, here we have a, uh, it's called a manzano pepper. There is, it translates to an apple pepper, because it looks like an apple, but it's not sweet like an apple, you know. It's little, you know, it's nice and crunchy. It looks, it's bigger than a, the color looks pretty similar to a habanero pepper, but, you know, the taste and the seeds look, you know, different. When I cut one open, you see the seeds are black, and in turn, the seeds in here are white. So each pepper has this unique, you know, looks and characteristics, and also different heat content of the, of the pepper itself, you know. So it's really, you know, amazing that, you know, how peppers, you know, spread throughout the world, and now we're using them in a, Many different ways in each, you know, cuisine from different countries, and it's amazing. It's really wonderful. What kind of peppers are used for marinated salad peppers? F which one? What kind of peppers are used for marinated salad peppers? Salad peppers? Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Those are called pepperoni. So like a little. T uh, what kind of peppers are used for uh, like pepperoni? Those are like little tiny uh, pepperoni peppers. It look like a. The color looks like a banana pepper, but a little tiny, smaller. And that, that's the peppers that I use to, for like salad peppers that you see in antipasto salads. Those are the peppers I use because they're not that hot and they get, you know, marinated in the brine and that's, that's how they, they, they use. So. Any more questions out there? No more? Okay. Well, I want to wrap this up and uh, again, Thank you for joining me, and uh, this has been a wonderful, you know, day for me to tell you something about peppers. And uh, like I said, I only got a few varieties here. I can fill this whole table with uh, 
different kinds of peppers, and you know, still you know, not have enough room. But you know, in every year, people are trying to come up with you know hotter peppers, hotter peppers. And the idea here is not to you know which one is the hottest one. I think it's just to learn how to cook with them, how to you know incorporate them in your meals without having to you know have this overpowering heat in your mouth that you're not going to be able to you know to taste any of the food. That's not the whole idea here. The idea is to learn how to you know. Use them in the kitchen and to you know get the flavor from the peppers again without you know killing yourself and burning your mouth and having to like you know go to the hospital. So that's that's not you know what we're looking at here. But again, you got to be really careful when you choose you know the peppers because sometimes a lot of recipes call for different peppers and sometimes we don't even know what they are. So if you guys have any questions, you know call one of the chefs here. We can always you know help you out with that. And I hope you uh, go out there and enjoy you know. Trying some, some new uh, dishes with peppers. Don't be afraid that you know it's gonna you know kill you. It's just uh, be careful that you know you don't you know use too many of them in the, in the dish. That's how you can keep the heat down and also enjoy the flavor of the peppers. Because there's so many different things that you can do with peppers, and you know you can eat them like raw, for example. Some peppers you can eat raw, like you know yellow peppers and green peppers and salads, and also you can you know stuff them. Chef Caesar, which peppers would you use for some traditional Hispanic dishes? Oh, well, we use, you know, like uh, poblano peppers. You know, we pretty use a lot of peppers. We use uh, jalapeno peppers a lot in the, in the Hispanic, you know, cuisine. And this is uh, really popular because we use this for like the, the chili rellenos that you see in restaurants. This is the pepper that we mainly use. And also jalapeno peppers, we use them in the, in the canned form. We use chipotle peppers to make a lot of dishes with pork. This is an adobo sauce. Like I say, it's a jalapeno pepper. But it's smoked and it's dry, and the flavor is so different than use a, a green pepper. So we use this uh, adobo peppers, I mean, this chipotle peppers, and adobo sauce for like a lot of pork dishes, chicken dishes. And also we use, you know, a lot of bell peppers for fajitas. You know, for example, you go to a Mexican place and you have this wonderful fajitas. We use, you know, you know green peppers, red peppers, and just, you know, we use a lot of peppers. Also, have, you know, habanero peppers, manzano peppers. We use a great variety of peppers in our. And the Mexican cuisine again, like the dried chilies are very popular. Making mole sauce, and we use them to make salsas like this chili, the arbol salsa. As you know, we have so many different types of salsas, and everybody comes up with a different one. And they use all different kinds of peppers. So we we really do use a lot of different peppers in the Mexican cuisines in South America as well. And like I said, that's why we grow many different varieties of peppers, as you can see. You know, and a lot of all these peppers are grown in Mexico and in different countries, but Mexico produces a lot of peppers. You know, and this is like like I show you. I don't have all of them. They we produce, but there's some. Like I said, there's so many different kinds, different types, and and every year they keep coming up with new varieties of peppers, and you know, with different heat levels and different tastes. So they're really popular, and they, I mean, they're gonna be for for a while, I think, because peppers make a wonderful ingredient in everybody's kitchen, and you can use them in so many different ways and different dishes, and uh. You just got to be able to enjoy it and not to think, oh, every dish is going to be hot because it has you no know, peppers in it. Like I told you before, not all the peppers are hot. Some have like higher levels of heat than others. And, but the main thing is to get the flavor, you know, not just to, you know, go crazy with the heat. Because, you know, once you have the heat, you really don't taste the rest of the, of the, the meal. So that's uh, what I'm looking, you know, to get across to you that you guys understand that not all the peppers are hot. You can enjoy a nice dish that has, you know, peppers incorporated in it without, you know, having to, like I said, burn your mouth or your skin or whatever. So there's ways that you can do that just, you know, by, you know, controlling the amount of peppers that goes into, into the dish. And like I said, all these wonderful colors, that, you know, they make a great, you know, addition to the to, to kitchen, you know, ingredients. And like I said, in restaurants, if you use all different types of peppers, it depends on the kind of a restaurant we use, cuisine we, we do. Yes? But they use a lot of like dry chilies, and they have a lot of different. Uh, like the Indian is the number one producer of peppers nowadays, because they're always trying to get the hotter peppers. They use bonnet peppers, and also a lot of dry chilies. They you know that they have, and like I say, every time they they come up with something different. They they the ones that are trying to get different you know hotter peppers every every time. The question was, what kind of peppers were used in uh in Indian cuisine? And that's uh, I was saying they use a lot of dry ch dry chilies like bonnet peppers and different you know like dry
dry dry chilies, like I said, for their you know powdered chilies, and uh, and they use a lot of uh, peppers in, in their in their cuisine. They also they use a lot of yogurt. The, the reason why because it tones down, like I said before, it tones down the heat and the pepper because you know the chemical blends with the uh, fat content of dairy products, and that's why they they able to to use a lot of yogurt in their sauces and and stuff. Anything else, sir? You guys have any questions for me out there? I hope you enjoyed this show, and I'm looking forward to see you guys next week with Chef Tom and Chef Susie. We're going to be doing the shows uh, three times a week from now on. I hope you can join us next week for another wonderful presentation. Thank you, and have a nice day.